Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. It's 11-7-2018, and uh, the Lord had me come on here today to talk about some things before I really deliver the, the big message tomorrow. It'll probably be the most important uh, revelation that I've ever been given since I started the channel. But today, he wanted me to read some things out of the book of Amos because uh, just to show that we're getting close to the time of the end. The point is, in this video, the message is the time of the beginning of sorrows is just about ended, and it's just about time for the seven-year tribulation to start. So we're getting really close to the beginning of that seven-year period and the end of the beginning of sorrows, and with that will end the, the beginning of... Uh, the time of Jacob's troubles is going to end the uh, church age. So the time to hear any messages and warnings is right now. So to the people that what will wonder when they watch the channel, we'll try to mix it up and uh, deliver some messages, which I've already did when I went over the... Uh, when we had the uh, series on the book of Ephesians recently. That subject was about, uh, you know, the empowering of the Holy Spirit for these last days between now and the time the tribulation begins and the rapture takes place, the final harvest of souls, and the final uh, latter rain period of the Holy Spirit like there, there was a, another time like there was in the book of Acts but a greater time than the you know to see greater miracles than we saw during the time of the book of Acts that is still going to happen between now and the time the rapture takes place but every day that uh, goes by we're one day closer to the the finish of all of this stuff in the beginning of that seven year period. We, every day we draw one day closer to it. And, you know, I was given a revelation to, to deliver for tomorrow. And um, so I'll be back on with that for tomorrow. I've really, in the last week, probably because, the, you know, of these messages that are, you know, being delivered today and tomorrow, probably. The reason that I've had so much spiritual warfare and problems in the last week or two. And, uh, you know, when you have uh, some something that you've got to deal with, a personal problem de uh, to deal with or something, it definitely distracts you from, uh, you know, coming on and, and, and delivering the messages when you're trying to... Uh, you know, do what, what you can to solve a problem that's, uh, you know, uh, creating a big, uh, a lot of other problems for you. One problem that creates a lot of other ones. And while you're sitting there distracted with that, trying to deal with that, you know, it's like uh, I could give the analogy of a big dam or something and uh, you know, it starts to leak or something, spring a leak, and you go there to patch the one leak and and then you look and there's another leak gets sprung. And then when you, you know, you go to patch that, then left and right, you have all these, you know, leaks spring and all at the same time. And you're trying to patch stuff up and keep the water from leaking through. And it seems like that's been the way it's been for me for the last week or two. And I know it's the enemy distracting me and trying to, you know, prevent me from coming on and doing any videos and getting out the warning. But for the people that, you know, wonder why um, sometimes there's, you know, why so many warnings, why such, so many warnings about judgment, why all of this other stuff, why not more uh, messages that are of a positive nature? It's because the uh, day and the hour that we're living in, brothers and sisters, that's why. And that's, that, that's the point he wants me to make today with this video today. It, it, it answers your questions to the why. It answers your questions to the why because we're here, we're in, in the place that we're at right now in, in the history of the church and in, in Bible prophecy, uh, that's where we're at. We're at, uh, we're just about at the end. 
And so therefore, the final warnings and stuff are going out to the world for the people that haven't accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This is our time right now to make a final appeal and to put, put out the final warnings because as I will show you in, a, in the scripture, one of the scriptures I give you today, you know, because uh, a time is coming when, you know, uh, there's not going to be any more warnings. The times for the warnings are right now. The times for somebody to, to make a choice and to decide if they want to choose uh, Jesus as Lord and Savior, the time to do that right uh, is right now. Today is the day of salvation, like the Bible says. So you want to know why that uh, some of the so many of the videos are about warnings, and then and, and the scriptures are about judgments, and they describe judgments, and they talk about all this stuff that's coming, because it's just it's just about ready to all come, go down. The times for the warnings are just about up, and so uh, it's just that that that's just the time in the history where we're at right now. So there's your explanation to answer that question for anybody that wants to know why so many messages about judgments. There's your answer, because we're almost out of time to to put out any more warnings. Who knows how much more time there is to put out warnings. We could be in the last weeks or months or whatever to put out warnings. We're getting really close, brothers and sisters. There's no question in my mind about it at all. That just keeps that message from the Holy Spirit just keeps coming back to me to warn me that, you know, uh, which is why despite all the setbacks and, and problems I've had to deal with in the last week and and times that I didn't come on because, you know, I had a, a bad cold that I was trying to get over. Uh, anything that the enemy could put on me to keep me from getting out here and, and putting out these messages. And uh, But I'm just going to keep bouncing back and, and, and do what I can in the time that I've got to do it. And I know that time is running out. So uh, the message for today, there are some of the scriptures I want to read. They're coming out of uh, the book of Amos. Once again, he told me, go back to the book of Amos and read some stuff out of the book of Amos because all of this is, is important for, for to what's coming right, really soon. For lo, he that formed the mountains and created the wind and declared unto man what is his thought, uh, and maketh the morning darkness and treadeth upon the high places of the earth, the Lord of hosts is his name. For thus saith the Lord God, the city that went out by a thousand shall lead by a hundred, and that which went forth by a hundred shall leave ten to the house of Israel. Seek him that maketh the seven stars in Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the dark night the, uh, the dark with night that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. For as much therefore as your treading is upon the poor, and ye take from him the burdens of wheat, ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye shall not dwell in them. Ye have planted pleasant vineyards, but ye shall not drink wine of them. Seek good and not evil, that ye may live, and so the Lord, uh, to the Lord your God of hosts shall be with you as ye have spoken. Uh, hate the evil and love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. Uh, it may be that your Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. So the time for people to repent, you know, the time for people to repent and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior is right now, before the day of Jacob's trouble comes. This is the time to be making that thing, but it's also the time for uh, people that are in the church believers that are in the church that are backslidden it's time for them to repent also and get get right get things right with the lord while they still have time because uh he's coming for a holy bride and a bride that's looking for him and and, and, a, and a and a bride that's focused on him and his return and not focused in the world 
and 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 following after the cares and 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 things of this life and, and for the most part most of their uh time is spent dwelling on the cares of this life and worrying about getting their investments ready or something and prepared and diversifying their portfolios and buying gold and stuff like that to uh to save them from what's going to happen or something because you know it's just the, the wise thing to do well in most cases there's something over the years in most cases in the past i would agree with that you know that you would you diversify a portfolio and 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 if you think something's coming or something maybe uh get out of some of uh, sell off some of your stocks and invest in a little bit of gold Normally, that would be good advice. Normally, that would be the good thing to do and the wise thing to do in normal times. And if we weren't so close to the time of the end and, and so time to the start of the Jacob's trouble, that would all be fine. But I've read scriptures to uh, everybody here on other videos. I've read scriptures to you and told you that uh, the Lord says that when these judgments and these times start, you will be throwing your silver out in the street and your gold will be removed. It doesn't say, the word doesn't say that gold becomes, well, obviously silver would become worthless or you wouldn't be throwing it in the street. But gold, it, it, it's going to have value during this time when all these judgments start and everything. It'll have value. It's going to be removed. It was removed, brothers and sisters. It was removed back in when Franklin Roosevelt was president, gold uh, uh, was removed here in the United States once before in the, in the Great Tribulation that we, uh, I mean, the, the Great Depression that we had back in the 30s that started when the stock market collapsed in 1929. Gold has already been removed one time here in the U.S. of A. So why would you think that if things got worse, than they were in 1929, if that's what's coming, why, why should anybody doubt that gold's gonna be removed then? Like it, it's some unbelievable thing. It's already happened, go back and look. Google it, look it, look it up. You don't have to take my word for anything. And all of the stuff, when you watch a video, like so many other people that are around here watch them, like I am, and, and somebody that's warning about these things that are coming, Take the things to the Lord, pray about them, and ask for discernment, and uh, ask him to reveal to you uh, the validity of this message, and, and, and find out for yourself, and come and look up the scriptures and read them for yourself. But brothers and sisters, a, a time of trouble that's not been since the beginning of, the, of everything up until now nor ever will be again once it's finished. That time of trouble is just about ready to begin. And I, there's no way, there's no way to, uh, you know, to try to put a positive spin on it. If you go and you read about it and you read about the 21 judgments, except there, there's no, no way to put a positive spin on it. The positive spin is when that seven year tribulation is over and Jesus Christ returns to earth and there's a thousand year millennial reign. That's the positive spin. The end of the story is a happy ending and a positive ending. But between right today, while you're watching this video and that day that begins a thousand year millennial reign, this seven year tribulation stands in between that time. And it will come to pass, and nothing is going to prevent it, and nothing is going to stop it. And, and you can't put a positive spin on that. All you can do is warn to get ready, to do what, to do what you can do, what you know that you need to do, while there's still time to do it. Don't waste any more time if you haven't accepted him as Lord and Savior up to today. Don't waste any more time. Make that choice today. Because 
the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you call upon him with a true heart and, a, and true repentance, and, and, you know, you believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection, you believe that, you know, you're a sinner, and you, you have need of a Savior, and you repent, and you call upon him and ask him to come into your heart and be your Lord and Savior, and you you say it out of a true heart and a true uh, word, then he will hear that prayer and he will answer that prayer and uh, he will come into your heart. He will be receive you unto himself and he will become your Lord and Savior. But the time to do it is now. Time is running out. We I can't emphasize that much any more than that. And tomorrow's message that I got to deliver, it just goes along with this. It's just more of the same thing. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. The day of the Lord is darkness and, and not light. The day of the Lord is negative and not positive. It's darkness and it's not light. There's no way then that it can pre be prevented, uh, presented as some positive thing. The positive thing is at the end of the seven-year tribulation when the Lord returns and sets up his thousand-year millennial reign. There's the positive news. It has a happy ending. And one of these, in one of these upcoming videos, I'll read what it says about that. Those are definitely some promising words. But let judgment run down as waters of righteousness as a mighty stream. Let judgment run down as the waters. Let judgment run down as the waters. Chapter 8. Saying, when will the new moon be gone and we may sell corn and the Sabbath that we may set forth wheat, making the epith small and the shekel great and falsify the balances by deceit that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of shoes, yea, and sell the refuge uh, of the wheat. Well, that's what's going on, brothers and sisters, right now. That's what's going on over there right now. That's what's going on over here right now. That's why you hear the saying that, you know, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Well, that's true because the wealthiest people of the top 1 or 2 percent in our country right now have more wealth than they've ever had in the history of our nation. That's a fact. That's a fact. So the rich are definitely getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. And what does he say about all of that? What is he saying about that? And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon and I will darken the earth in a clear day and I will turn your feasts into mourning and, and all your songs into lamentations. And I will bring the sackcloth upon all loins and baldness upon every head. And I will make it a mourning as the morning of an only son and the end thereof is a bitter day. Behold, the day comes, saith the Lord God, that I will send a... And this is an important one right here. And this is the point. This is the point, And this is the thing that answers your questions. Why so much... Uh, videos about judgment. Why, you know, for the person just out there that's just asking out of curiosity and maybe hasn't accepted the Lord as Lord and Savior at this point and comes across one of my videos there. And they'll say, well, you know, why so much talk about why Why so many warnings? Why, why so much uh, darkness? Why so much doom and gloom? Why not more positive messages? Well, you can get the positive messages, brothers and sisters, down the street in the brick-and-mortar churches. If you want to hear about a prosperity gospel, go to the brick-and-mortar church. <clears throat> and that's where you're going to hear it. If you want to hear the song and dances and, and nothing could be better, uh, things have never been better, and we're going to make Mer America great again, if you want to hear that, go to the brick-and-mortar churches again. If you want to hear any of that, go to the brick and mortar churches. Don't come on to the alternative media thing and, and, and because that's the place that the Lord has put for the truth to continue to go forward until he comes and gets the church out 
This is where the messages and the warnings and the true things that are coming from uh, messages from the Lord are coming. They're coming right through the, these uh, YouTube ministry channels. If you want to hear the positive thing all the time and only the positive thing, you don't want to hear anything about the judgment that's coming. You don't want to hear about the tribulation. You don't want to hear that the time to repent is right now and accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You want to find out how the Lord can make you rich. And you want to find out how the Lord can tell you how to invest your portfolio and stuff and become wealthier and wealthier and, and uh, just continue to run out and buy uh, more material things. Go out and buy a second home. Go out and get a, a second car. Go get a, a house that's twice as big or whatever and celebrate the prosperity and uh, your success, your financial success and, you know, your uh, pat yourself on the back for being so wise, you know, that you, you know, you're, you're succeeding financially. And that is the only thing that matters, you know, because the only people that count are the people with a lot of money. Nobody else counts. But uh, when I read, go back and read the New Testament, I don't see anywhere in there where the Lord even had a home. He didn't even, he wasn't a homeowner. He didn't own a home. Isn't that strange? Jesus didn't own a home. He wasn't no, a homeowner. And he didn't, he would go around and tell people to repent for the kingdom of heaven was coming. But he never, I never saw anything in there when I read through there about him telling people how to flip houses. I, I, I'm i pretty sure of that. I didn't, I never heard anything in the New Testament about him telling people to go buy gold. He told them to buy, buy of his father. Buy of him, invest in him. Store up your treasures in heaven, not upon earth, was what he taught. But go to the brick and mortar church, and and, and they'll 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 talk to you about the prosperity gospel. That doesn't make any sense to me. It's we're right almost at the end of time. It's time. Uh, I'm sure that Noah, he, when he was building the ark, and he knew how about how much time was left, and when that uh, thing had to be finished being built. I'm sure he he wasn't going around the neighborhood telling people how to invest, how to invest to be, and become wealthy right before he finished the ark. And that's where we're at now. And what, what, what you, you need to invest in right now, right now, before the then the world was destroyed, we know by water, this time it's going to be destroyed by fire. And you need to get aboard the ark of the new, new covenant. Jesus Christ is the ark of the new covenant. And you need to get on board the ark because the door of the ark is about ready to close. The door of the ark is about ready to close. And what does he say here uh, that I, I wanted to, uh, I told you was the whole uh, emphasis of uh, is uh, chapter 8 and verse 11. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst, nor of water, but of hearing of the words of the Lord. So that has not been fulfilled yet, brothers and sisters. That's still a prophecy that has to be fulfilled. It hasn't happened yet. So he's saying that a day is going to come when there's going to be a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water, but of hearing of the words of the Lord. So the day is going to come when you're not going to hear any more warnings, when all of the time for the warnings and the people to, to issue the warnings is going to be up. The day is coming when there's not going to be any more warnings. The day is coming when you're not going to hear any more preaching, and you're not going to hear any more uh uh, talk about repentance and getting ready before judgment falls or something to decide to, what, uh, about what you're going to do about Jesus. Uh, the day is going to come when you're not going to hear it anymore. That day is coming, brothers and sisters. So the time to hear the warnings and, and heed the warnings 
and be a doer of the word, like I've said in some other videos, and not a hearer only deceiving your own selves. Don't talk about the, the, the different things that we're supposed to be doing as believers. Live them. Live them. You know, and follow after his example and imitate him and his behavior when he was down here. That's what we're supposed to be doing. And not simply just speaking about how we should behave and live. Like so many are in the brick and mortar churches. They talk about that. They wear a thousand dollar suit. They go in a, in a, and they go to this big show that somebody puts on a big play or a big production or something like a movie theater or something. And then they come home and they take off the thousand dollar suit. And then they live like the devil until the next Sunday. They live like the devil until the next Sunday. That's what's going on here in America. And a, and a big, a big percentage of the churches and their membership is the people, you know, pretend like they're saints on Sunday and live like the devil the other six days. And he's sick and tired of it. And it's going to come to an end. No more games. Games are coming to an end, brothers and sisters. I can't emphasize it anymore. I'm not going to stop putting out warnings. I have to do this stuff because the time for me to do it is running out. I have to do what I'm told to do. Whether anybody, you know, somebody agrees with it or believes in it or anything else, you want to mock it and scoff it or whatever. But I'm going to continue to put the warnings out. Because the time for putting the warnings out is almost over. Therefore, lo, I will command and will sift the house of Israel among all nations like the corn is sifted in a sieve. Yet they shall at least the least grain fall upon the earth. All of the sinners of my people shall die by the sword, which say the evil shall not overtake nor prevent us. So... Uh, you know, I'll read that one more time. All the sinners of my people, all the sinners of his people in Israel, you know, when the seven-year tribulation, the time of Jacob's trouble start, and there's some other t things even before that. There's Ezekiel 38 and 39. That hasn't been fulfilled yet either. So all the people that scoff about war coming, that, that say that they're believers and that they're born again and that they have the Holy Spirit in them and yet they mock and scoff about when, when people talk about war coming. They, they wonder, you know, they scoff about it and say, well, where's this event? Well, what, what event, what, when, 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 when is the event going to happen, brother? What, what event are you talking about? And they come out and they put a comment down there and they scoff about the event. The event that in the uh, video that I did about the event, the event was World War III. World War III is coming, brothers and sisters. Whether anybody believes it or not, it's coming. And it's coming soon. And you, if you would have asked, uh, you know, why is it coming to us? Well, because it's prophesied to come in a lot of different prophecies. And of course, the people that are, you know, going to bring in the one world government and this whole thing, they planned it. They planned it. They planned it a long time ago. That's why Albert Pike, many years ago, outlined the three world wars. The two of the three have already happened. He outlined that in, eight, in the 1890s, brothers and sisters. It was outlined in a letter. Two of those three wars have already happened. Why should anybody doubt the third one's going to happen? Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine. Now, this is this is the good part of the good message that uh, when the seven-year, uh, I mean, uh, the thousand-year millennial reign begins. And the hills shall melt, and I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. And the waste cities, waste cities from what? From a world war. He calls them that. They'll rebuild the waste cities. Waste cities, why do they have to rebuild the cities, brothers and sisters? 
because they've been destroyed and worn. This is why. And inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof, and they shall also make gardens and uh, the fruit uh, the fruit of them, and I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up from their land which I have given them, saith the Lord God. So one day he's going to plant them on there, and they're never going to be plucked up off of it again. The land that some people are proposing to be divided right now. And uh, I want to add, too, that the, the land that uh, the current Israel covers right now is not even all the land that was described to Abraham in the book of Genesis. So we, we talk about cutting back borders and giving up stuff and cutting back and dividing the area that they control right now. But the area described to Abraham is, is wider than the area that's under their control right now. I don't know how many people know that. So their, their borders are going to get bigger, brothers and sisters, according to the Lord, that the area that he promised them is larger than their current borders. Not smaller, larger. So uh, that concludes today's message. God bless each and every one of you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, keep looking up because our redemption draws nigh. Thank you for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you on the next upload.